Hello and welcome to episode 245 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, another Alfred Hitchcock film, which I saw quite a few years ago specifically for this series, watched it with my mum and thought, Connie will probably like this, so I'll wait and watch it with her, which ended up taking years and years. But we're here, we've seen it, it's Strangers on a Train, I've forgotten the year, that's going to bug me, Ni early 1950s, 51, 52, somewhere around that area. And so it was after Rope, which is interesting because Rope was in colour. Anyway, that's just a whole other thing. So Strangers on a Train is about, would you believe it, strangers who meet on a train. Beginning of the film, we have Guy Haynes, I believe his full name was, who is a, a famous tennis player. And we have Bruno, who is, I, I'm assuming in his 40s, you know, uh, lives with his parents still, has some money, but doesn't seem to have any real prospects in his life or career or anything like that. And he's a very interesting and intriguing character who immediately takes a shine to Guy when he meets him on the train and says, I know you, that's that tennis player. So he sidles up to him and gets, gets chatting and stuff. And he very much imposes himself on Guy, which is basically the theme of the entire movie. Yeah. Now, the, the hook of the film, two strangers, two strangers meet on a train and quote-unquote decide to swap murders meaning that they both have someone they want to take care of with Guy. He's got a problem with his, his wife, who's not going to divorce him, who he's long since separated from. And Bruno... He could just strangle her. Right, and Bruno uh, wants to get rid of his dad, because you know, his dad's giving him hassle, man. Uh, so the idea is, if we swap murders, we're two complete strangers, there's, <laughs> there's no motive. Perfect murder, right? Only for Bruno, this is dead serious. The dead between actually fucking serious. Getting a serial killer, or no, no, not serial killer. What's it called? An what? assassin hiring an assassin. Right. Yeah. And he, just done that. he could have. Yeah. And Guy uh, kind of just takes this as oh, he's just joking. Surely, you know. So he gets off the train, thinks nothing of it, but then he starts getting calls from Bruno about their their plan that they agreed on, and then it turns into kind of a stalker movie. Then basically. Um, so uh, you said that you thought the film was going to be set on a train for the entirety, I so you were kind of disappointed. I thought they were going to do all the killing on the train. Yeah, yeah. And I thought like, I would have loved both, that. I would have loved I thought that. Both parts were like equally into it, uh, so I was surprised by both those factors. Uh, the guy who plays Bruno is pretty. He was a really good actor. Yeah, I think. he's really good. I, I'm I'm sure someone like Wolf Gratz is going to come in the comments and say, "Oh yeah, he was in this, 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 and this." I've I've haven't seen him in anything else. I don't recognize his name. And he looks a little bit like Bill Murray sometimes. You've got to admit you saw that too. I, I admit that I saw it in some of his expressions. Sometimes. Yeah, not I didn't not say some, all the time. Yeah, yeah, it, it's in the, in his expressions for sure. But he's a really good actor, and he really plays this this. I mean, Bruno is. He carries the movie, I think. Of course, he does. He does carry the movie because he's the he's he's the central moving part of the plot, where he is not leaving Guy alone. Yeah, but he's also a lot better actor than what Guy was. Yeah, I agree, and I think uh, Guy I think, was decent. Decent, no, but that's when fair. he was playing against his wife i was just like oh my god this scene is painful i wouldn't say that but i no, do i, I do like agree they were reading their lines she was okay but him i was just thinking like it doesn't even look like he hates her or loves her or anything it was just like it was almost like they met that day if you know what i mean mm. that's how little spark there was between them right you know and and so i was in that moment i was thinking oh my God, he's so lousy. This is really gonna bother me. But when he was playing as that other woman, he was decent. Who do you mean by the other woman? Uh, Anna. Anne. His, his current partner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's her yeah. Name? I'm not sure. I can't remember what her, her was name Anne was. Something. Yeah, she was good. I liked the sister. She was a fun character. Um, <laughs> yeah. A little over dramatic. A little over dramatic, but that was, that was kind of the charm of it, and I, I enjoyed that. But I do agree with you. The, the the actor who played Guy, who I think I've seen somewhere else before, but he. He was okay, you know. He he was good at parts, but I'm overall, I was surprised that Hitchcock let that slip. Isn't isn't it? Wasn't Hitchcock kind of like today's Cameron in a way? He wants things to be great. Yeah. You know, he's got such great movies with really great actors, and then Bruno was like as expected, not like as good as uh, James. No, James Dean. Jesus. James Stewart. Stewart. Sure. No, wait. Was that who was? Yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> My guy. You know, but uh, no. See, look, look, to me, Guy was very forgettable. Someone, someone like Hitchcock. That's the thing. He had such a prolific <clears throat> career. Like Hitchcock wasn't like a 
like a Tarantino or something where like he'd make a film every three, four, five years. Hitchcock was making film after film after film for decades. When you're doing that, you you, you haven't really got the time to, to have every single actor perfect. It just is what it is. Sometimes these things work. Sometimes they work when they yeah, cast. Yeah, the main actor. Well, you know, I don't think he's bad at all. I just, no, I, I would say that he was good. not as good. Exactly. By comparison to Bruno. And the contrast makes it jump out even more. Yeah, but I, but I liked that it, that he was kind of just a plain character who was being put through this like really tricky situation, which he was with Bruno. I I don't know if we go into spoilers too much, but I really liked the sequence at the fairground, the first sequence with Bruno. That was really well done. <laughs> that was and, actually really cool. And, and it was fun. It was like they, it was fun the way Hitchcock was playing around with your perception of what was going to happen in that scene. Um, there's some nice. There's some nice kind of direction in the film. I love when a guy is at a museum or something, an art gallery, and and Bruno turns up and he's like, Look, "What are you doing? Like, get, get away from me!" You know. And as he's leaving in the car, he looks out and he's just stood there on the steps, you know, just almost like a statue looking at him. I was but, actually hoping he didn't disappear when they went back. Again, <laughs> right, yeah, because yeah. Because that would be just, no, that but, would be too horror-like, but that was, he was still stood there. It, it, it almost did approach that kind of horror sensibility, yeah. almost, not not quite where, you know, he, it is, to me, it is a stalker movie more than anything yeah, else. Yeah. And I love when when Bruno starts taking more chances and, and like turning up at parties and stuff where Guy is, and so that's when it gets really fun. But my favorite moment of the film, probably not the best moment, but my favorite moment is when Guy goes to a tennis match and the balls are going back and forth and we see a shot of the crowd and the crowd are going like this. Left, right, left, right. And Guy is looking into the crowd and suddenly we zoom in on the crowd and there's only one face who's not moving and it's Bruno sat there just looking at him. Brilliant little, I just love the visual of it, of all the heads moving, just this one solitary face looking at him. Mm. Really, really well done. That being said, I think the best part of the film is the ending. I think that last 10, 15 minute stretch is so well done. The tension that gets built up, you know, when Guy is at this tennis match and he's got to like finish the match soon to get back because of a very important thing that's happening to, to do with the whole plot. And then, you know, he's, he's winning the match, it's going well, and then suddenly he starts losing a little bit. It's like, oh my God. And I love the way it just kept layering all this tension until we get to that final kind of... And the of, lighter scene, too, was pretty the good. The lighter scene was great. And, and I then, was actually going, no! Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the ending on the carousel is such a great sequence. I just loved the, the build-up of it, the action. Uh, the old guy was like, I'll, I'll, I'll sort this out, and slowly starts crawling under the thing. That was so great. Like, he's got one of those, like... Like, you could tell it was a guy who had no teeth. Like, he's got one of those faces, you know, where it's just like he's a proper... Old people like that who have all uh-huh. those all those wrinkles, yeah, yeah, all those wrinkles and those features, like it's just much more interesting. Like it, he leaves an impression just by the look of his face, and uh, to me anyway. And yeah, so Strange on a Train, I think it's a really really good film. I, I really enjoy it. Enjoyed seeing it again for a second time, and I think Bruno, the actor who played him, was the standout and made it so much better than it was. And as much as I'm a, a fan of films set on trains, I wish there was more of that. But, you know, I like the setup, you know, of just this idea of two strangers meeting. And and it's kind of scary in a way. If you, if you meet the wrong person and they decide to impose themselves on your lives. It yeah, can it's be... very thrillerish. Exactly. Yeah, it is a thriller. It's, it's kind of the... It, it's it's Hitchcock's wheelhouse, the the thriller, yeah. and I think, but it it's not quite as thrilling as as his other movies, and I would say comparing it to his other films in general, it's it, it's about in the middle for me. It's not one of his top tier movies, but it's no. certainly not one of his uh, no worst or or my least favorite. I, I really enjoy it a lot. Mm. Is it a film you should see before you die? Yeah, not in my opinion. I'm gonna say yes, but I will. I will say that it, it's one of my weakest yeses, which is which is tricky. But I like to, to to be positive about things, and I think that this is a really good film that people should watch and see. Um, maybe because it's not one of his most you know, talked about or praised, you know, because you might think, oh well, people don't talk about that one too much or whatever. Uh, you should still see it. It's still really really good and got some great scenes and great moments. Um, so I'll say yes. But I understand why you say no compared to his other films which are so so much better so but with Hitchcock his highs are so high that it's kind of tough to to match that sometimes that's a good reason why it's one of the Hitchcock movies that I've never heard of as well there you go I'd always heard of it because of the title and it's, it's a catchy title and it's kind of an intriguing title so I just feel like that's something people say mm. strangers on a train it happens every day I don't know Enough is enough. I've had it with these monkey swinging strangers on this Monday to Friday plane. Anything else you want to say about strangers on the train? Uh, 
No, I think you kind of summed it up there. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. That's the that's the review. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.